Hello and welcome to Function. Today's lesson is very important. Function has a lot of applications in math and science. Today I have an introductory lesson just to introduce general properties of this machine. Function is a general name for special types of machines in uh, math. Pay attention, function is a machine which has input and output. But not all the machines are regarded as function. Function is a machine which has only one output for each input. So if you give special input, you will have one and only one output for that, not more. The set of values that this machine accepts is named domain of function. And the set of possible values for output is called range of function. Rule of function. I write y equals fx and I read that y is a function of x. So the name of this function in this case is f. It could be g, could be h and so forth. x is the input of this function and y is the output of this function. It could be a linear function like this. Here the rule of this function in the case if I give the input of x it's multiplied by 3 and then added up by 5 and give you the output. That's all. It's a linear function as the exponents of x and y are 1. So, for example, I give 2 and I will get 11. Why? 2 first is multiplied by 3 and then added up by 5. Another input could be 8 and then 8 is multiplied by 3 and then added up by 5, so the output will be 29. As you see, for each input, I will have only and only one output. Squaring function, another example. Here the rule is different. y is equal to x to the power of 2. So the input is raised to the power of 2. For example, I give 3 and I will get 9. If I give 8, 8 is raised to the power of 2, so it will produce 64 and so forth. Which one is not a function? Suppose that f is given like this. For the input of 8, we have got 12. Yes, it is function because we have a single output for this input. What about g? For the inputs of 2 and 3, I have got just 12. Yes, it is also regarded as a function. It's no problem that for different inputs, the G may generate just one output. It's okay. What about H? We have got seven for the input, but it generates two outputs. No, no, no. It is not a function at all. A relation is given below. Is it a function? Look at this. Y is equal to 3X plus and minus 5. So for every input like x, suppose that it's 2, it generates two different values. 3 times 2 will be 6, plus 5 and minus 5. So I will have two outputs, 11 and 1. No, 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 no. It's not a function at all. Graph of function. How the graph of function may look like. Suppose that a graph is given like this. Let's check if it is a function or no. I select a certain input like x and then I draw a vertical line. This is named vertical test line. As you see on all the body of this graph, this vertical line will cross the graph at only one point, not more. So for each input, I will have just one output. Yes, it is a function. What about this one? No. This graph is not a function. As you see in a part of that graph, if I draw the vertical test line, it will cross the graph in more than one point. So for every input, I don't have necessarily one output, at least in a part of graph. So generally it's not regarded as a function. Why functions are important in physics? Look at the left side of this slide. You see an x graph. x is location of the object, the position of the object, and t is time, okay? And it's a function. What does it mean? For a certain time, like t1, a certain moment, you will get just only one output like this, x1. This is the location of the object, and it's logical because for a certain moment, I can't have more than one location for an object. But the right side of this slide, 
indicates an impossible case in which, for example, here, if I give the T, the graph gives me three outputs. How is it possible? Pay attention how an object could be in more than one location simultaneously. This is why functions are so important in physics. Also, VT graph, velocity time, acceleration time, and so forth must be always a function. Later, we will learn them in physics. Ascending function. Let's go back to the math again. I select a certain point on x-axis like x0 and then I draw a vertical line to cross the function. Here, let's go one step to the right, to the positive direction of x. Then I lose the function. As you see, this point is not on the function anymore. How can I go back again on the function? One alternative is going back again to the left. I don't want to do that. So. The other choice may be going upward. So if I go upward, I will find the function anymore. So one step to the right will imply one step upward to find the function. This is why we call it ascending function. The other could be descending function. If I select a point like this and then I go again to the positive direction of x, I will lose the function. But this time, for finding the function, I should go downwards, as you see. Then I will again go back to the function. So, one step to the right, a few steps downwards to find the function. This is why it's descending function. That's all. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. See you in other videos.